Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Weasel, I know you're in there. <laughs> uh, uh, now, Weasel's never <laughs> difficult to feed. Hi, bud. Oh, you want that rat. Oh, my goodness. There's a happy Weasel. Now, please, Miss uh, Rhino Viper, take note on how to do it. <laughs> there you go, Weasel. He'll carry that around for 45 minutes like a happy dog with his bone. He is such a character. So they know it's feeding time. Miss Green is, uh, is very expectant. Uh, Puffy is <laughs> defensive as usual. <laughs> so we'll go with uh, Miss Green first. Not that hand, this one. There you go. Okay, there's Miss Green. Now, Mr. Puffy, who has been very picky and really hasn't uh, eaten in a couple of weeks, but rather than retreating, he seems to be coming forward. So we will offer him a rat. He's, he's been somewhat picky. Such funny behavior. It's that's all defensive. It's just like, well, I don't know if I want to eat this. It's he's not his normal uh, self. Uh. All right, so we're just gonna leave that and uh, see if he eats it, <laughs> Mr. Puffy. You know, it's not like I. I try to injure these guys. Uh, they're all uh, uh, pampered, to say the least. You are a silly creature. Oh, I see this rhino viper over here. Uh, head bobbing. Are you interested in something to eat, huh? Are you interested? You are, huh? Oh, look at that, huh? There we go. Look at that rat, huh? Isn't that a nice one, huh? Well, they're all turning their nose up, well, except for Miss Green. Well, we're just going to leave that too. It's in her cage, and uh, we don't go moving food around once it's in somebody's cage. Well, Mr. Pointy Nose, you're next. This is an appropriate size for Mr. Pointy Nose. And we'll go in on this side because it's the side where he is not. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I'm striking out here. You know, I, I keep telling people, feeding snakes is sort of like bass fishing. It's all in the presentation. Um, you have to get it just right, otherwise they're, they're just going to turn it down. Huh? You interested in that at all? You know, again, you know, I am trying not to put my hand in the line of fire because so often these guys <laughs> overshoot the end of the rat and end up on your hand. Uh, you know, my friend Joe in, uh, in Florida had a Bushmaster come up and tap him on the hand uh, while I was trying to feed it. That's why I tried to put myself off angle and, you know, um, Elvis bit my blue blue sneaker and sunk his fangs into that after missing the rat on the end of the tongue. So I'm really cognizant of of how I approach and offer things so I'm not in the line of fire. It looks like this uh, female uh, Lesser Sunda Islands Pit Viper likes to have her head uh, squished between the knot and the wood and her backside. Uh, that's her prerogative. Uh, if she wants to live that way, uh, she can certainly live that way. These are the Echis Pyramidums. Are you interested in this, huh? You seem to be. Okay. No strike. Alright, I'm just going to leave it. If she wants it, she'll eat it. If she doesn't, she won't. I hate to waste uh, mice. Mr. Barnetti always eats. <laughs> but he's not going to get fed this week. So here's another one of the uh, Echis Pyramidums that we hatched out. And I'll just leave this on the log like I normally do. Um, again, these are very close to sexual maturity and um, they've been acting uh, accordingly. However, I think this one is definitely female uh, because she generally does not hesitate in, uh, in eating. Today on camera, she's going to prove me wrong. Oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, that one I, I'm certain is female. That one's a male, and that's expected uh, to be a little bit uh, of a crummy eater. And that one usually eats too. Mr. Forrest Cobra, I'm sorry, dude. You're not going to eat this week. Uh, I know, you're trying to get out to visit with me and say, hey, where's the food, dude? As you can see, he's slimming down. I've cut him way back in his food, and look, you know, he has no scale spread anymore in his midsection. Um, so, he's a much more healthier snake. We can see the divide between his spine and his back. It's all a little bit sunken in. Uh, that's what you're supposed to see. You know, I used to feed him two or three mice or two rats a week. I cut him back to one. End of story. One. And he's doing a whole lot better, looking a whole lot better. Um, so. Of course, he's not happy about it. No, no, no. <laughs> They're never happy when, when I cut back on their food. So here's another little uh, ringed water cobra I'm growing up. Again, very personable little snake. Uh, she will usually come forward when you have uh, food to offer. Other than that, she's very shy. There we go. And she's the same age, same group as the other one. Um, 
and she just shed so we got to clean that up uh, when it's safe to do so so we'll just let her eat we'll shut this Mr. Brown has a nice fresh bowl of water and the first thing he always likes to do is play submarine. Well, he wouldn't be so thirsty if he didn't crap in his water dish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he has to poop in it almost uh, every week. That's a long drink. This is one of the few snakes in our collection that truly doesn't care what's going on around him. It doesn't stop him from doing whatever he's doing. He just does not care. He's a lot like a honey badger. Yep. Got your good drink and you're all done? Well this gal is going to get fed again because you know she uh, produced a whole bunch of slugs um, and therefore has the opportunity to eat a little bit more than I would normally feed her. I'm still trying to get her weight back uh, from uh, Producing those ova, sadly, they were all unfertilized, but it still takes the snake lots of energy to produce those. So she gets uh, she gets a feed. Once again, these two little characters are uh, ready to feed. The problem is uh, uh, feeding one without the other one getting hurt or them latching on to. Uh, the same prey item, there you go. Now just stay there. Don't move. Oh what, it's not the right temperature? No, you fed the other one first, how dare you. There, <laughs> I just heated it up in the hot water briefly, <laughs> and that did a trick. It's amazing what a few degrees of temperature will uh, will do uh, to get the uh, the pit vipers feeding or not feeding. Picky, picky, picky. Oh yeah, are they ever? And I don't need picky, picky right now because of the current uh, situation. Uh, well, every once in a while, all this light goes out, and it needs to be replaced not that he climbs his tree often and hangs out in there uh, uh, but it does provide a little bit better lighting for the camera so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill his mouth with one of his favorite things and that's a rat and uh, hopefully that will Allow me to uh, uh, to change his light bulb.
usually, and I say usually, he's not likely to drop the rat. I know, I know. I'm just uh, going to change the light bulb, dude. Oh, I know, I know. Believe me, I'm not trying to piss you off. There you go. Now, I will take your filthy water bowl if you'll allow me. I know you're watching me. All I'm doing is taking your water bowl to clean it so you have something fresh water to drink once you're done. So let me go do that and then we'll put it back and that will be the end of our Elvis ordeal for the week. Alright, we have a clean water dish. I'm going to new and cautiously reinsert the water dish to its normal resting place. And then some fresh water in. Top that off a little later. And we'll let the cranky beast uh, uh, eat his wrap without us uh, intervening any further. Yes, I know, Mr. Elvis. He's like, get out of here and let me eat already. Well, as you can see, Mr. Kazakanovi is uh, a rather excitable dude. Uh, he is uh, he is waiting for his Tucker, and uh, he is just uh, a maniac. I know that's my hand. Oh, all right, all right, relax, relax. He's a very dangerous dude to uh, to shoot this by hand and uh, open the frickin' door. I don't want him uh, flying out. Over here. Oh, there you go. Now he actually sits still for a half a second. Uh, he would eat until uh, he exploded. Uh, as you can see, he's got really nice body weight. He's, uh, he's just fine. It's unfortunate he's losing his nice orange stripe, though. Alright, we'll let him uh, eat that uh, where I can operate safely. Mr. Bug Eyes, where are you, dude? Huh? There you are. Oh, I'll hit that twice, which means that he'll definitely eat that. Mr. Uh, Echis Pyramidum Egyptian Saw Scale, father of the, the youngsters over there in the rack. I've had this guy forever. He's uh, the grandfather of almost all the Echis Pyramidum that have come out of here. Um, normally he's a live feeder. Yeah, because we're on lockdown, he hasn't, uh, we haven't gotten any live food for him. It doesn't look like he's, uh, he's interested, but not that interested. Well, if you get hungry enough, uh, you might get interested. What? I, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm making it look live as I can. It's dead. Come on. Oh, how dare you touch me. Alright, so I'm going to leave it. He can eat it, or he doesn't have to eat it. Not much I can do about it. <laughs>
Russell's Viper. Now these are the runts of the litter. I'll show you in another video the their siblings that are doing quite okay. These are the the two runts that just uh, have not thrived. Matter of fact, this one I am back to feeding really small because it uh, it regurgitated uh, uh, the larger sizes.